To swing a great sword requires a balance of strength and dexterity, so your best bets for a starting class are the hero, warrior, vagabond, or samurai. Focus on strength and dexterity as you level up, but there are some other stats to keep in mind as well. For one, you're gonna need a lot of HP via the Vigor stat, as well as high endurance to increase your stamina and carrying capacity. Great swords are heavy. Even when you reach endgame status, you'll still be swinging your weapon much slower than a lot of your foes. That means you'll need to be able to take a good amount of damage, so heavy armor is also key. The trade-off is that great swords are excellent for staggering your enemies, letting you follow up with a devastating critical hit. Charging up your weapon for an especially strong swing takes extra time, but you can't argue with the results. Let's talk about some specific swords now. Getting your hands on a great sword can be done as soon as you start your adventure in Limgrave. It's just a few steps southeast of the gatefront site of Grace. Take out the soldier guarding the carriage, then open the chest for the weapon. Another early game great sword is the Claymore, found in Castle Morn on the Weeping Peninsula at the southernmost point of the map. Starting from the main courtyard with the pile of burning bodies, head to the top of the pyre. Head past the next wall and turn right, entering the building marked by the torch. The Claymore is in a chest directly on the left inside. Getting into the mid-game, you can obtain the Maris Executioner's Sword at the Shaded Castle in Altus Plateau. Progress through the dungeon until you reach its boss, Elimer of the Briar, and defeat him to win the sword for yourself. Another option is the Blasphemous Blade, which adds fire damage to your attacks. This special weapon is what you might call a boss soul weapon meaning it's crafted from the remembrance of the Blasphemous, which you'll receive upon defeating the demigod Rikard, Lord of Blasphemy. Once you've done that, take this remembrance to Enya in Roundtable Hold to craft the sword. We can't do a great sword build without mentioning the most famous blade across all from software games, the Dark Moon Greatsword. However, this weapon can only be obtained at the end of Rani the Witch's questline, which is far too involved for this video. To get started, you'll have to clear Karia Manor and speak to Rani at her tower behind the estate. This game-spanning quest actually leads to one of the main endings. We have a full walkthrough for the rest of it on our wiki, so hit the link in the description for all the info on that. Now let's say you want an even bigger blade than the ones you've been carrying so far. In that case, you might want to consider working your way toward a colossal sword. These are almost comically large, dealing high physical damage at the cost of even more speed. They can't be infused with Ashes of War in most cases either, so they're definitely not for everybody. Even so, a solid Colossal Sword could carry you through the entirety of the game as you grow into it, so there are some big payoffs. Just note that they all have very high stat requirements to wield properly. One of the first ones you can come across is the Grafted Blade Greatsword, which is directly inspired by the Iron Throne from Game of Thrones lest we forget that George R.R. Martin teamed up with From Software to write the Elden Ring lore. You might not ever get your hands on the Winds of Winter, but you can get this great sword in Castle Morn, the same place you found the Claymore. Beat the Leon and Misbegotten at the end of the dungeon, and it'll drop it. The great sword is not to be confused with all the great swords lowercase g we talked about earlier, because it's actually a colossal sword, despite having the same name as an entire weapon category. Thanks, Miyazaki. Follow the road northwest from the Kalem Ruins site of Grace and Kalid to find a carriage guarded by giant dogs. Defeat them to get the weapon inside. Also found in Kalid is the Godslayer's Greatsword. To get it, you'll need to head to the region's Divine Tower, make your way inside, and all the way down to the lowest level. Here you'll face a Godskin Apostle. After the fight, you'll find this Greatsword in a chest behind the boss room. Our last recommendation is the Star Scourge Greatsword. And as you might have guessed, it is made with another remembrance. Specifically, you'll have to beat General Radon, then take his remembrance to Enya to fuse the weapon. It matches Radon's own paired swords, meaning it's actually a two-for-one deal. It also has the Starcaller Cry ability, which hits enemies with powerful gravity magic. We've talked a lot about swords, but we should also take a moment to mention shields. The constant question of a greatsword build is whether or not to use one. Two-handing any weapon increases your strength by a full 50%. For example, the Grafted Blade Greatsword has a hefty requirement of 40 strength to even wield it at all. If you have at least 27, you can use both hands and effectively use it. So a shield is really up to you. 
In many cases, it might be best to two-hand the weapon until you're able to hold it with just one, then switch back to a sword and shield loadout. If you get really comfortable with dodging, then you can keep both hands on the blade. Just be sure to keep an eye on your equip load. If it spills over into heavy load territory, you're not going to be able to roll at all. Of course, armor also adds a lot to your total load, especially since you're going to want some pretty heavy pieces. The top recommendation is the Bull Goat set, which is the heaviest in the game. The trade-off is the highest physical defense as well as the most poise, which is an invisible stat that governs when you and your opponent's stance breaks. The Bull Goat set is granted during the Patches quest line, which you can start upon speaking to him inside Volcano Manor, provided you spared him if you happen to fight him earlier in the game. Much like with Ronnie, we'll defer you to our wiki via the link in the description for more information if you need it. One alternative is the Tree Sentinel set, which is found in the Oriza Hero's Grave in the Altus Plateau. To get it requires you to destroy three chariots inside, which means following a specific path. Our wiki has the exact details so that you don't miss a step. Just hit the link in the description. Once you've got your armor picked out, you can accessorize with some talismans. The first one we'd recommend is the Bull Goat's Talisman, which matches that armor set from earlier. It's inside the Dragon Barrow Cave in Kaelid. Past the patrolling rune bear is a cavern full of animals, and you'll find this on the nearby body. Equip it to increase your poise. Head to the Bestial Sanctum in Kaelid, and you can find the Dragon Crest Seal Talisman, which reduces physical damage taken. Carefully drop down the roots and rooftops on the northwestern side of the building to find it on the lowest level. If you need to increase your equip load, then we'd recommend the Arsenal Charm. The base version is missable, but you can always find the plus one in the Altus Tunnel Dungeon. From the main room with the workers, take a right to find a vertical chamber with one of those rock-spitting space flies. You'll need to avoid that attack, hop on the tree branch, and follow it to the platform above to find the charm. Finally, there's the Erd Tree's Favor, a good talisman for basically any build in the game, since it increases your HP, stamina, and equip load. You'll find it in a hidden lower section of the Fringe Folk Hero's Grave, if you drop off this spot at the second chariot ramp and make a U-turn. If you're using a great sword or colossal sword that allows for Ashes of War, we have a few of those to recommend as well. The first is Bloody Slash, which adds a nasty blood splatter and some extra arcane damage to your attacks. It's dropped by the Knight Commander at Fort Height, found along the eastern coast of Limgrave. The commander is up on the ramparts. Another good Ash of War is Flaming Strike, which, as you can imagine, coats your blade in fire. It's found at Radon's Red Main Castle in Kaelid, carried by the Teardrop Scarab in the graveyard behind the castle itself, further south. Once you get back there, you can chop it down to earn this ash. If you want to deal lightning damage, then Thunderbolt is a good choice. You'll find it in the Royal Capital. Starting from the Avenue Balcony site of Grace, head downstairs and outside. Make a left and follow the railing, and you'll see another Teardrop Scarab down at street level. Beat it to get this Ash of War and give your enemies a nice shock. Finally, there are a good number of wondrous Physic options for your Greatsword build, depending on which aspects you want to focus on. To temporarily increase your strength, use the Strength Knot Crystal Tier. It's almost directly northeast of the Stormhill Shack site of Grace. Head that direction to find it sitting in a stone bowl near a troll. To buff your dexterity, use the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tier. This one's on an island in Liurnia of the Lakes. We've marked it here on the map for you. The next three tiers are dropped by field bosses, and you can actually get two of them from the same foe. Head to the Minor Erd Tree in Dragon Barrow and Kaelid to find one of those gnarly putrid avatars. Beat it, and it'll drop the Opaline Hard Tier and the Stone Barb Hard Tier. The first increases your damage negation for a limited time, and the second makes it easier to break an enemy's stance. Both are great options for keeping yourself healthy and knocking others down. Next up is the Leaden Hard Tier, which prevents you from being staggered yourself. To get that, you'll have to beat the Ulcerated Tree Spirit in Mount Gelmir. It's guarding the Minor Erd Tree there. Finally, you can increase your maximum equip load for a limited time with the Winged Crystal Tier. It's in the capital outskirts, along the wall to the north. Don't mind the snails. But do keep in mind all these tips for your greatsword build. This guide has covered all the recommended weapons, armor, and accessories to make this melee build the best it can be. 
If you're more of a Magic user, we have guides for that too.